So this is the first question. And I hope it's uh, relatively easy uh, when you do this uh, calculation here. Um, relatively easy in the sense that if you've been following the lecture and you're familiar with the notations that we are using. So that is possibly the hardest thing here because you have to recognize this as a thing. It's not um, absolute value that you would have been using when you were dealing with the real numbers. This is the absolute value squared that's defined in the context of the complex values and complex numbers and complex value functions. And this uh, as a matter of notation is defined as the complex conjugate times the, the function itself. And the complex conjugate here, um, what this uh, conjugate operation signifies is wherever you see imaginary number i, you change it to minus i. And to the extent that the variables you have are real, you don't have to do anything to it. But somehow if you have a complex valued variables, then you have to you know, make x go to x conju complex conjugate and have to deal with uh, this operation later on when you know it's value more better. Um, so, so once you unpack this notation, then the calculation itself is relatively simple. I can kind of actually just guess the answer and write down the answer without doing it. What I wanted to note was uh, um, giving you some sense of intuition about these complex numbers. So the answer here is easy. I think it's a one. I'm doing it in my head. So uh, I could have made a mistake, but I'm pretty sure it's one. Let me check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a reason I knew without actually going through all the detailed calculation um, that knew that it was one. Well, one is, I, you know, it's simple enough. You can actually do the detailed calculation in your head if uh, you have built up enough of the algebra muscle. Um, there's another reason for that. Um, there's a um, kind of a way to understand the complex numbers in a geographic sense. Geographic? geometric sense. Um, so each of the complex numbers, they have a geometric representation in the complex plane. A plane consisting of real value of the complex number in the x uh, horizontal axis and the imaginary value of the um, complex number on the vertical axis. So, um, so this number x minus i y, for example, would be represented on this complex plane as all right. Uh, let me mark this as x, my x. This says my as minus x, and this says my y, and this says my minus y. So the complex number x minus i y that would be represented by this point here you could almost think of it like as a vector. And, um, and vector is actually appropriate because this uh, operation here, it's uh, meant to measure the length of this vector <laughs> or uh, complex number. So what you have here in this particular fraction is uh, so the, this, uh, Sorry, I'm trying to pick my color here. Uh, this uh, um, kind of vector in two dimensions, that, uh, um, that's what my numerator is in that uh, fraction, numerator. And for my denominator, okay, my x, the real value is still x, but my imaginary value is now gonna be plus y. So my, um, so my um, the complex number, or the phasor representation of the complex number that uh, that's my denominator is this one, that's my denominator. And, um, you know, these complex numbers, they're not the same. They have different values. Uh, so when you take the ratio like this, as the complex number representation, it's not gonna be something simple. But there is one sense in which this uh, turns out to be simple which is that both of the uh, magnitude or the length of the numerator is the same as the length or the magnitude of denominator. 
you can kind of see it here in this uh, geometric representation. So, um, so when I take the ratio of two things that have the same length, when I calculate this thing that represents some notion of length, um, it's no surprise that the ratio of the two things that have the same length uh, has the length equivalent to quantity that turns out to be one. So, um, so you know, to answer this question, you don't have to go through all this. Um, you can just go through the algebra and get it done in under a minute. But um, I want you to you to start thinking about this. Um, uh, the geometric representation of complex number. Uh, that is really the places where a complex number finds a very, um, a very valuable use, particularly in upper division um, and graduate level engineering and physics. Because a, a complex number gives you a very nice formalism in which uh, things that can be complicated geometric things can be done through a very simple algebra. So, um, 